This is an image by Rod Roy Menzies, which is a fusion of x-ray and, and then drawing to fit what was there. A very clever way, I think, to go about, to go about doing it. Next slide. This is a cover image of the book Communion versus the Star Child by Rod Roy, and again, this was his final product after he shaped that face. Now, this is the prototypical gray alien, but Bud Hopkins told me one time after seeing this, he says, you know, this cover we use when we, when we talk to abductees, he says, we'll put that in front of them and we'll say, is this what you saw? And if they say, oh yeah, that's, that's exactly what I saw, he says, we know that person is probably stretching it because this was put on that cover to sell books. Mm -hmm. It wasn't put on the cover to be dramatic. In fact, Whitley Strieber himself argued against to the publisher not to put that. He said, but that doesn't look anything like him. He said, yeah, but it'll scare the hell out of everybody. <laughs> and it did. It's one of the most arresting book covers. You know, it just sold millions of copies off, off of that cover staring out at you out, out of a book rack. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Bud says, this looks much more like when we, when we hear them described by people who are genuine abductees, it's much more like this than like that. Next slide. So forensic sculptor Bill Munns, this is another guy, who made a clay model of how the star child might have looked when alive. And this is it from, from both angles. Next slide. Let's see. You know, this is where we find out if it works or not. Yes! <laughs> Animation of the star child sculpture. And you see Bill putting it together. Now, the neck's a little, in my opinion, too big. The eyes are ridiculous because he had to cut the, When I saw it, I said, I said, Bill, what are you doing with those eyes? Those eyes look like normal. I said, you couldn't put an eyeball in there, human eye, because you know, he have eyeballs to make. He said, oh, yeah, you're right. The eye looked like a big frog eye sticking off there. It didn't work at all. And I said, well, what did you do? And he said, I just cut it in half. <laughs> and I said, well, well, you know, the eye isn't at all accurate. He says, yeah, but Lloyd, you can't have real human eyes in those eye sockets. If it's got eyes, they have to look something like this, you know. So, and the neck's a little wide. He, he wanted, he just, he couldn't live with that little pipe stem neck. <laughs> so it looks like it's just gonna break off, you know, and he didn't want to have it, the neck break off. Bump it accidentally and break off or something like that. But anyway, so now, hit it again. Animation redux, now that you know about the eye. Now watch the half eye socket. You see the half eyeballs in there? And the, and the, the little neck, he fleshes out. But that's still pretty cool. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, me, do, do you think it's possible that the star child could uh, could ever, you know, be among us or somebody like the star child? Would we know it? <laughs> well, next slide. And I guess, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Proportional analysis, no, that's it. You, you were okay, right here. This is really cool, and I forgot that I added this just recently. Proportional analysis of the star child face by Chris Murphy. And what he says is that our faces are really built interestingly. Our eyes are at the 50% mark. The tips of our nose are at 25% uh, of what's left. And then our chin, our mouth is at 12.5%, 12.5% to our chin. Our faces have pretty good balance within percentages. The star child's nothing like that. It's 57% down, 11% instead of 25, 15% instead of 12.5, 70% instead of 12. Anyway, it's very, you know, different. The facial proportions are very different. Now the thing was, can can they move around us? Yeah, video, next slide. Can they move around us? And, uh, I have Vivian to thank for that. She came well, yeah, 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 but Paul McCartney is the wrong Paul McCartney. Yeah, that's right. It could be, it could be the wrong one, yeah. Not the real one in the middle. Next slide. <laughs> okay, two things found in the star child bone. Now, this is really interesting. Two things found in the star child bone are not found in the bones of any other creatures on Earth that are known at this point. Unknown fibers are embedded in the matrix of its <clears throat> bone, and unknown red residue is in its cancellous holes. You'll see both. Next slide. This is the fibers, and this is the cancellous holes, and this is just a piece of the bone that you saw that we cut out that you saw. And when you look at it under a microscope, this is what you see. You see these fibers dangling out of the holes and strung around it. And they are unbelievably, unbelievably durable themselves because that's a Dremel blade. You see these things here? That's a Dremel blade doing it, you know, making these cuts. And yet they're resisting the cut of the Dremel blade. So that tells you how strong they are. And they are embedded in the matrix of the bone like rebar through concrete. And we're going to see some up close. Next slide. We'll see this knot up close. Next slide. You see this knot here? 
that not there, and then we see these two over here up close and we see that they're different. But here you see what's important to see is it's coming out of the, 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 this track of the bone here and it got snapped up here and it seems to have been pushed up through here and this thicker kind got wrapped around it in, in a way that we can't imagine. It's, just, it's like how a magician did it or something, I don't know. But anyway, and you see a different kind, but these things are in the matrix of this bone. And what they do is they add to the strength of the, the, the collagen, the, the heavy, heavy collagen, that's reinforced with that. Why does it need such strength in such thin bone? Who knows? And it might have to do with inter, you know, intergalactic travel or something like that. We do know that when, when our people are up on the, you know, the space station, their bones weaken, and one of the first things that happens when they come back is they find that their eye sockets have shrunk a bit. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes back seeing a little different if they've been in there three months or more. Their eye stock sockets start to shallow, to mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. And you see the star shot with its shallow eye sockets. So there's something about being in space that does that. Really weird. Okay, next slide. This is another isolated flat fiber. This is yet another kind of fiber. We, we just don't understand these fibers, but we do know that they didn't just grow on it because the bone was, you know, it was just come off the thing and they were there. So it wasn't, it isn't, my, we have mycologists look at it. It's not, not uh, anything bacteria, fungi, mold, nothing like that. They're there. And this is, you can see a frayed piece right here where this piece got hit by the Dremel blade. Instead of cutting it, it just frayed strong stuff, whatever that is. Next slide. And this, this you see a perfect shot on the inner part of the bone of it lying in the matrix so that there's just no argument that this stuff is in the matrix of the bone. <coughs> now this is the, the reddish residue we're going to look at. And this is chips of bone cut but not polished. This is where you cut them but we, we haven't polished either one, the human or the star child. And you see how much milkier it looks because it's got that much higher collagen content. Next slide. You see the human bone, when it's polished, and this is the same piece of bone, but that hole is that hole, this hole is this hole. So you see, and that's the outer, and this is the inner surface of it. But you see that in the course of death, when you die and when you're decomposing, in the natural course of events, you are carrying bacteria in your body that is designed to wait until you die and clean you out. Just clean you out, and it will clean out your 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 um, not your collagen. Your um, what's in, what's in there? Right. Marrow. Sorry, marrow. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. It will clean out your bone marrow, like you see right here, to the to the point where you can eat out of it. I mean, it's just beautiful. This was it, it, to me. It looks like alabaster, but it was very carefully polished, like with lapidary tools, like jewelers polish it. And this is what you get. And, it, and it's really nice, and this is how you see. There's not a shred of marrow left anywhere. It shouldn't be, and it isn't with the human. Next slide. And with the star child, it's completely different. You've got this reddish residue all over the place. Now, that's not going to be blood mar uh, um, marrow because that's blood, and it's going to be black if it's oxi you know, mm -hmm. it's, when it's oxidized. It's something else, and we don't know what it is. And we just don't have the money. The, the problem with what we have is we have this incredible thing with all these neat things to find out, and we can't get the money to do anything with it because science doesn't want this answer. I've had this stuff out for 13, I'm on my 14th year now. Any of them could have come forward and said, we want to know too. They don't, because they don't want to know. They want to have me floundering out here as long as... I, as long as they can keep me away, they will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat them eventually. Mm -hmm. I know I am, but it's been a hard road. But this stuff is what keeps me going because I know it's for real. Mm -hmm. Next slide. <coughs> Here you'll see another shot of it, backlit, so that you see plenty of it. It isn't just a fluke thing. Something going on here. We, have no, we wish we knew what it was, but we don't. Next slide.